it's me, Lavender Gray, here with a tarot reading. We have three piles to choose from today, and the reading is all about self-love. I've got a malachite alligator and a rose quartz here for your heart chakra. And uh, I just wanted this to be a sort of like feel good, what to love about yourself um, reading. I'll do a little bit of a breakdown. So at first we're going to look at these oracle cards for an energy check-in, see if anything calls to you, make sure it's your right reading. Uh, then we're going to look at the Shadowscapes Tarot uh, to see what is lovable about your body, your heart, mind, and soul, plus a message from your higher self. And then we are going to be looking at the Work Your Light oracle cards by Rebecca Campbell. Um, to give us some advice on how to move forward with the information we got from the tarot. And the very end, we're going to shuffle some Pokemon cards. I really like that, um, that part of the reading, because I feel like it's lighthearted and it gives you a little companion to take home with you. So without further ado, let's get into the pile selection. Pile number one is this Rose Quartz. Pile two is this Moonstone. And pile three is this amethyst. So take as much time as you need to decide which pile calls to you. It could be more than one. It could be none of them, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, if you're having trouble deciding, let me give you a randomization uh, choice. So got a D4 here. Number one. So if you're having trouble deciding, start with pile number one. Um, and let's get into it. Hi there, pile one. If you chose this rose quartz, then this reading is for you. We're going to get right into this energetic overview to check on what energy is surrounding you at this point in time. We have 28, Memory, Field Poppy, with the color red. That is your root chakra. The Reunion, Soul Recognition, Collaboration, Partnership, Friendship. We've got some pink roses here. And number 21, Clover, Release Your Guilt. So. We have lots of connections to the past here with these cards, with memory, reunion, like redoing it and releasing your guilt over the past. So um, performing a soul retrieval ritual might be very important to you at this point in time. I feel like a lot of your energy has been left in the past and now you're very tired. Um, this card speaks about how you're not alone and how people like souls have chosen to walk alongside with you. I feel like there might have been some friendship breakups happening uh, in the recent past um, and you might be stuck in your head about it. Um, there's another card from this deck called Nostalgia, uh, Stay in the Here and Now, where you might be missing things that are happening uh, in the present moment because you're worried about the past. I would say that's sort of Four of Cups energy, where you're sort of forlorn or melancholic um, because of things that have happened in the past. And not saying that these things aren't, like, important or impactful because these things obviously have been very impactful um, for you to be stuck in this energy. Um, I feel like time heals all wounds is sort of what's going on here. Like you just need time and the universe is giving you time, giving you as much time as you need. And there is this feeling of not self-loathing, but just like disappointment in yourself, like maybe I should have said this or done that um, or reacted a different way, but uh, the universe is telling you to release your guilt. Maybe doing a burning bowl ritual might uh, be helpful. I'm just seeing like ritual might be something that is very important for you. Obviously, magic and witchcraft and spiritual things are no substitution for therapy or medication or anything like that. So if you need professional help, uh, you should feel supported um to like like receive it um like there is support waiting for you if you're trying to raw dog life without seeing a therapist or without talking to a psych and you know that you're struggling with something that they could help you with i think now is a bit of a wake-up call to say okay yes you are struggling maybe you don't need to be struggling as much as you are um have you ever thought about that <laughs> that maybe you don't need to suffer 
um, a bit of a martyr archetype here is coming through. Um, there's this deep sadness, but it's sadness about the past and it's something that you really need to work through um, or honestly just let go of. I think you're doing maybe a bit too much work about the past um, and pay attention to the people and friends that are in front of you here who are helping support you. Like I think if you did reach out to people and maybe even like asked for like words of affirmation or asked for something specific, I'm, I think you might have friends that are more than happy to give it to you. Even if it's one good friend, um, that is more than zero. <laughs> it's one more friend than zero. Um, and I definitely don't think you have zero friends. I think you do have people who keep you in their memory as someone. Um, I just heard the word luscious. I don't know if that's the right word, but loving maybe. All right, let's clear these. It's a bit of a, um, I want to say challenging energy. Um, just because I think you're like suffering more than you need to be suffering. Okay, let us get, I'm gonna, I have not used this deck in a while, so I'm just gonna try to clear it with the selenite here. And we're setting the intention to receive messages for pile one's best and truest good and how they can love themselves. Let me put this back, oh, please. That'll have to do. Oh, it's, it's wicked crooked. Okay, hold on. All right, that'll have to do. So we're going to pull four cards initially. This is the uh, one of the decks I learned on. This is a very important deck to me. I highly recommend it. Okay. Can we get messages that was such a sloppy shuffle messages about what is lovable about pile one's body first and foremost all right we're not having any fallout so i'm just going to pick some what is lovable the two of cups i'm not going to do reversals today i don't want to the two of cups so you have just a lovable frame. You just have a body that is so filled with love and enjoyment and pleasure. Um, we have this heart hanging above this couple. Um, I would say if you're, uh, you might be in a romantic relationship already and uh, you might have someone who loves you um, and loves your body and giving you pleasure. If not, you can be that lover for yourself. Um, I think you're someone who just really enjoys pleasure and really feels joy in their body and that's something extremely lovable. It's lovable about your heart. Ooh, we got the, um, she is the box card, uh, this queen of swords here. So about your heart is that you speak your heart and you speak your authenticity. I don't think you speak quite often. I think you maybe keep things to yourself a little bit much. Um, but when you do speak, you speak from your heart and that is so wonderful and you're very poetic and very good with your words. Let's see, we have some purple flowers. We have some, I don't think they're swans, maybe like a heron or an ibis and some butterflies as well. And then we have some goldfish over here as well as the tree. Just pointing out the symbols in case uh, any of these are meaningful to you. What's lovable about your mind is the four of pentacles. You like to keep things safe. You like to keep things close to your chest, which I understand with this queen of swords. Um, I think um, <laughs> you're very generous as well with your wealth. Um, and that might be money. That might just be your time and energy that you like to share with your loved ones. I think you are someone who maybe has a companion archetype. Like you really like being someone's best friend. Um, or you like being someone's partner. Um, uh, you might have a Gemini placement in your chart somewhere. Um, I'm a Gemini moon, so I feel you. I have a huge companion archetype, but um, I think there is this desire for true ritual connection between people. And once you find someone who meshes with you, you're more than happy to share your life and your energy with someone. Um, this could also be uh, energies with spirit guides as well, but I'm not 
I don't want to send you down a rabbit hole, um, a rabbit chase. Um, let's see. What is lovable about your soul is the eight of pentacles, your patience. Excuse me. What's that? Your ability to see other people's stories is really, really cool. This is someone who is very patient, kind, and generous. This is someone who is a bit tired um, and maybe does keep to themselves. Maybe you do keep to yourself kind of a lot because I think you might be pretty introverted, actually. Um, uh, but when you are around friends, um, you open up and are able to express yourself. Let me get some clarifiers. King, we have the Queen and the King of Swords. Oh, very cool, very cool. Um, so like I said, oh, we have a snowy owl here and some crows, um, as well as his wings. Um, you might be very good at listening to your body's needs, like hunger, going to the bathroom, sleep, um, and that is something that you probably have had to work for. Um, this Two of Cups might be you being in love with your own body, actually, and self-love like that. Um, and the way you talk to yourself, the thoughts you have about your body are very, very powerful. The power of our mind um, and, and our like narrative, our personal narrative, um, affects our daily lives in a way that we're not always aware of. Um, but I think you have risen to this place of speaking kindly about your body. All right. And underneath the heart, we have page of swords, page, queen, king of swords. So yeah, uh, you definitely probably have some air signs in your chart. That's Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Um, and we've got black and white swans here and as well as some crows. I really love this card. Look at how beautiful she is. So you might be a poet, you might be a writer, um, and you might want to write about yourself. You might want to like write about yourself the way someone who loves you would write about you. Like if you are a writer and you write about characters that you love, maybe what would those characters say about you uh, or something like that, like a writing exercise like that. Um, writing a gratitude list as well. All right. Oh, okay. We have both the seven and eight of pentacles, which is about waiting for the right time. Uh, eight of pentacles is more about like diligence and hard work and patience, whereas seven of pentacles is choosing whether you want to accept something new now, or if you want to wait for the fruit to ripen a little bit more. I just love these cards so much. Aren't they so pretty? They're very easy to learn on, too. The imagery is so evocative. Um, you might be someone who is into tarot as well. You might have this. There's like all these messengers here with the swords. Um, swords represent matters of the mind, um, intellect, logic, conflict, puzzles, um, the element of air. So it's very quick, quick witted person. Um, and I don't think you have to wait to treat yourself better like you don't have to wait for your body to be perfect for your mind to comb through all of the tangles um if that makes sense my little metaphor all right let's see underneath your soul is the emperor so we have lots of royal cards and then we have queen of cups as the message from your higher self so we have two queens a king of page two, four, seven, eight, and number four, the emperor. If any of those numbers hold um, meaning for you, we have kind of a lot of uh, multiples of two and four, but um, the emperor is a firm but kind leader. He embodies a uh, divine masculinity, sacred masculinity. He is a protector and a provider. Um, I think this might be the place you're coming from. Like this feels like a very rooted, concrete um, 
foundation and then everything else is sort of like growing out of that so I think in your soul you know that you are worthy of love and that you are more than capable of giving love to others um, I think you might be I keep talking about archetypes like I'm about to say you might embody the hermit archetype um, so maybe looking into archetypes might be useful for you um, there's an archetype deck by Caroline Mace, um, as well as like a bunch of research about it from other philosophers and stuff throughout the world. Okay. Um, let me clear these. Are there any other messages? Sometimes I clear them too early. Hmm. Let's see. I want to congratulate you on the way you express yourself with your words. You might be an artist as well. All right. Those are the messages. Um, and your higher self, the Queen of Cups, wants to congratulate you on the work you've done with balance, um, especially when it comes to balancing your emotions. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the Oracle cards to give us some advice about how to move forward. Keepers of the earth, you are not alone. Ancient ancestors stand beside you. Yes. Okay, that's what we saw in the original um, oracle cards when with the reunion talking about not being alone and how others have chosen to walk with you during this lifetime. Um, so ancestor work as well as grounding. Um, and we have lots of animals here. We have a lion or a cougar. We have elephants. We have bears. We have some wings. And we have some people here. Um, is it? What are you? I think they're eagles. Yeah. Um, are, are these wolves? Sorry. Um, it's really beautiful art. Um, I just wanted to say the animals in case any of them are important to you. These might be wolves. They might be bears. I don't know. I think they're wolves. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have Sisterhood of the Rose, Beauty and Devotion, Priestess, Mystic, Teacher. Yeah, so if you are a witch or someone very spiritual, I would say that your spiritual powers are sort of at an all-time high right now. Um, hi, thank you for watching my spiritual witchy video right now. Um, I would say trust your intuition, trust your groundedness. I think you are really good at grounding yourself and you might not even realize it. I think you're someone with a deep rooted system into the earth. You might have an earth sign in your chart as well, Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus. I'm a Taurus. <laughs> uh, this is really solid energy and the universe is saying that it loves you so dearly and that you do have ancestors and spirit guides on the other side like v like uh, working for you. Um, happy to see you succeed. Um, I'm smiling. There's just this like huge wall of light uh, from your ancestors and your spirit guides saying that like you got this, you're doing it, woo, and play, have fun, celebrate, don't be so serious. I'm like, birthing a new age, birthing new creations, dreaming a new world into being. <sighs> so. You're already in a rooted place. You're already grounded. You did that. Good job. <laughs> um, and now you can relax a little bit. Um, if you are maybe watching a lot of these sort of tarot readings or spiritual stuff, maybe take it a little bit less seriously. Um, I don't know why I'm called to say this, but my eagle-eyed viewers will notice that, yes, I have a gel manicure on underneath the red polish that I uh, don't feel like going to a salon to get soaked off. <laughs> Um, so hopefully that little tidbit of information made you laugh. Any other messages? Just that you are already so loved. And the last thing we're going to do, oh fuck, is drop a card. See what it was. Transformation. Things are changing at a cellular level, deep healing. Let's go ahead and read from the book since it like fell out onto the floor and it really wanted to be. 
Let's see. I need the table of contents, okay. Transformation. Where is it? Hello? There it is, 106, okay. I don't know why that took me so long to find. All right. Transformation. Things are changing at a cellular level. Depealing. Things are changing at a cellular level. You are not who you were a year ago or who you will soon be. You are in between, emerging, half risen, half falling. Keep doing the work. You are transforming. You will look back at this time with awe. So much is happening in your inner world and within your cells. It's time to release old ways of being that have kept you in fight, flight, freeze mode. To choose a new way of being where trauma is not the driving force. Old childhood patterns are rising up to be healed. Oh yes, we were talking about the past. A bit of a wounded child archetype but like I said I think you're in a much better place right now like I think you're safe enough to be yourself as you allow yourself to observe them and feel them without attachment they loosen their grip and fall away you're being called to find new ways to self-soothe Saturn and the Black Madonna and the African goddess Oshun influence this card. Saturn represents destruction and transformation. The Black Madonna represents the underground and all that has been cast aside, and Oshun re represents the tender love of the original mother. A rethreading is happening, healing at the deepest of levels. While you are in this phase, don't put yourself under pressure to perform. You may need to review your relationship with your body, perhaps even shifting your diet or exercise regime or getting energetic healing support. Yes, okay. There, um, if you're into tattoos, there's a, a very spiritual um, ritual of getting a tattoo that is a soul retrieval ritual. Um, yes, okay. Uh, hopefully you've heard of it. You may need to review... Oh, we already said that. You may also need to consider some kind of emotional support as issues from your childhood may come up to be healed. You are deeply loved. That is everything I was talking about. I love that. Hold the card on your heart and say, I, I allow myself to receive the deepest healing and transformation for change to happen at a cellular level. Cellular level. An unpronounceable word. But let me put that aside. And we're going to open up the Pokemon cards just to give you something fun like that play card said just a little bit less serious hopefully you have been enjoying these messages um thank you so much for letting me channel your energy and read for you and if you enjoyed this video or something resonated please leave a like comment or subscribe to my channel um let's see we got zamazenta v Ooh, let's take a look at the foil the, these card protectors have like a little frost to them. I'm trying to get it to the camera to see how cool and shiny it is. So this is a legendary steel type uh, with a big shield. So I think this is saying that you are protected by the universe. Chili and Ceylon and Cress. The guys, I think these are the guys with the monkeys. You know what I mean? The elemental monkeys. Pan, pan poor, pan sage. I don't know the other one. Um, but they're so cute. I think this is another call to the friends around you or the friends that are about to be made. And one more. <gasps> Mewtwo! Are you hollow? No, I don't think so, but it's still pretty cool art. Psychic powers. Okay, that is where I'm going to leave you. You got some cool Pokemon cards, um, but thank you so much for watching. Bye. Hi there, Pile 2. If you chose this Moonstone, then this reading is for you. Let's get into our energetic oracles to see what's kind of going on in the situation here. We have Connection, Forget-Me-Not, with a mill in the Black Forest in Germany, what inspired many fairy tales. We have the crowning, initiation, thresholds, birth, rebirth, a seat at the table. Motherhood and parenthood is also indicated here, but it's a card that speaks of transitioning from one world into another, and you might be doing a lot of groundwork when it comes to that. And number 34, voyage, you already have all the answers. We have lots of blue here, so that is our throat chakra. 
Speaking your truth might be very important right now, especially to yourself, first and foremost. Connection is about friendships. We had a lot of stuff about friendships in pile one as well, so you might want to watch that. So I just ran and got the book for this card because I felt like um, I wanted to see what Miss Amanda Lovelace had to say about it. I know it's about going within, but I wanted to say the actual words here. And it's kind of ironic um, because you're watching a tarot reading, uh, which is an external source of answers when it's talking about going inside, but let's see. You've been feeling lost for a while now, wandering through your life aimlessly, searching everywhere for meaning and never coming up with anything of substance. That's the problem. You keep searching for answers outside yourself when all the answers can be found within if you take the time to look. You need a spiritual mentor, and at this point in your life, that person needs to be you. So I wouldn't be surprised if you're someone who also reads tarot or does a little spiritual witchy witchcraft stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, we have a feather and then a crescent moon pendant here and a mermaid tail in the background. So this is probably kind of a difficult point in your life as periods of transition often are. There might be some metaphorical contractions in your life where the transitions are kind of painful, um, but it's it's healing work that you're doing. You know, when scabs get itchy um, uh, as they heal, it's sort of like that where it's like healing pains. Um, let us put these away. Let's put these away. Any message? Sometimes I clear them too soon. I did that in pile one as well. Let me... I um, have been reading the books for these. Um, so you might be someone who really enjoys research. Um, page of Pentacles energy here. Friendships that are long-lasting as well as love are all indicated with the energy of forget-me-not. You might be a very good friend as well. That's something that's very lovable about yourself. This flower will prompt you to have a more tranquil and focused mentality and assist in study, exams, and learning situations where recall is vital. Yes, we're talking about studying and, and being studious and stuff, um, looking to the books. You may find yourself with old friends or lovers or mending old bonds. Challenges? A lack of self-confidence and of clarity can be shown by this flower. Both need to be quickly rectified. A departure from the connections that enrich a life spiritually or emotionally is something to watch out for as it can be reversed easily. Okay, now I'm going to clear them, because I think we are all good on that part. And we're going to go right into the tarot. We're using the Shadowscapes tarot deck. And we're going to get some messages about what is already so lovable about you, Pile 2. It's a bit of a, a drained energy. I think you might be someone who's very tired, and honestly... Obviously, I have a vested interest in you continuing to watch this video, but you might be spamming tarot readings or stuff like that. Yeah, he agrees. Someone on a motorcycle. Damn, these are nice to shuffle. Okay. Alright, what is lovable about... Let's take this one. The Empress! Okay, this is what's lovable about your body. This is... <sighs> nourish your temple we have lots of butterflies here as well as some orange orangey roses <sighs> if hmm how do I want to say this I think you have a, a voluptuous body I want to say vivacious like a vixen um, and I just wanted to congratulate you for that for having a beautiful body um, and this body takes care of you. I think it gives you messages about what it needs. Oh, do we also have a heart? We do have a little heart dangling right there. Okay. Did you see my gel manicure that's underneath the red polish? Um, I told that to pile one as well. I was like, I'm not going to a salon to get this soaked off. Anyway, anyway. <sighs> But I think your body gives you messages about what it needs um, and exactly when it needs it. And I think you're someone who's really good at listening to your body and someone who is very royal as well. Like you might not even realize the air 
around you like the your presence is something very noble and is very reminiscent of royalty um i'm i'm imagining someone like sitting down and sighing like sitting into a couch and sighing as you get comfortable i think might be a move that you do that is just very attractive as well i think you're a very attractive person um you might not even notice it you might not even notice notice when people are attracted to you i think because you're just so in your own empress energy all right, what is lovable about your heart is the Queen of Pentacles, another royal lady. Um, Pentacles is the element of Earth. So that's Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo. Um, and the Empress is ruled by Venus. So that's Tora and Le Taurus and Libra, I believe. Um, another, uh, this pile is so, you're kind of difficult to read pile too. I'll tell you that. Um... But your heart is very generous and very, I don't, I want to say open, but only to specific people or situations. I think you're a very guarded person and you might keep your squishy inner self uh, to yourself um, and sort of have this like hard uh, armor uh, of an exterior. Um, but you might honestly be very aware of your queenliness. Um your benevolent leadership, um, as well as the gifts that you give. One of your love languages might be gift giving. I think you're a great giver of gifts, um, uh, if and when you ever so desire to do that. Um, Christmas might be one of your favorite holidays. I don't know. All right, about your mind is this two of wands. So you are very good at teamwork, I think. Um, you might be the leader, but uh, let's see, we have a lion creature here and some cats. Uh, perhaps foxes. I think they're cats, though. They're little critters. Um, you might be in a relationship already that is a pretty equal partnership. I'm going to the book again, just because I feel like that's where we're going to get the best. I don't know. A lot of times I just read intuitively, but for you guys, I feel like going to the books. So. Personal power and influence, authority and courage. Be bold and inventive, but also beware of letting the intoxication of power cloud the mind and judgment. That um, is pretty some pretty good advice because we have two royals coming out as well, so making sure you don't go drunk on power. Um, you might be someone with a more dominant personality who is uh, able to take charge of a room. I would say the warning there is to not let the power get to your head. As the book has said. All right, what's lovable about your soul is this Eight of Wands. And I'm going to look it up. Don't worry. The Eight of Wands is the beginning of a long journey toward a goal. A great undertaking is at hand, and it speeds toward reward with hope and momentum. I'm going to go ahead and pull some clarifiers as well. Spirit, can we get some clarifiers? Or pile two is best and true is good. Let's see. Not this one. Death, number 13. All right, we have two major arcana. The way that you view yourself, particularly the way you view your body, is now outdated and you need to update it, um, as it were. You need to start seeing the beauty in yourself and the beauty of the function of your body as well and make sure that you're listening to what it needs. Clarifier, the Knight of Wands. We have lots of fire energy here. So you express yourself with fantastic showmanship I want to say we have a little lion gazelle creature with some foxes down here um, and it looks like we also have a shell um, I like pointing out the symbols in case they have meaning to you but um, we have foxes over here too with the eight of wands like I said I think you are very well guarded with your energy. Is there a meaning that you're seeing that I'm not? This Queen of Pentacles, maybe you don't think you deserve to be called the Queen of Pentacles. Um, maybe you don't feel very royal, but okay. I just had to take several deep breaths to calm myself. There's this really anxious energy 
Um, and I want to say, if you're watching this tarot reading and it's making you anxious, then maybe this isn't the reading for you. Um, tarot readings aren't meant to make you anxious. They're not meant to scare you, even when cards like death come out. Um, like you got the Empress and the Queen of Pentacles. Like those are really positive cards. Um, I'm not quite sure what to say here. Um, I'm not quite sure what messages are getting blocked. Like I feel like there's this huge block um, in front of me. And it keeps coming back to this Queen of Pentacles. So let me look her up as well. She yearns to nurture and care for others. She is brimming with generosity, possesses a warm spirit, and will lend her support to any who ask. So that came out uh, in relation to your heart, pile number two. Do you not believe me <laughs> when I say that you are royal and worthy of love and that your heart is generous and kind and patient? <sighs> okay, I think we're doing a little bit better. Clarifier for the mind is the tower. Yeah, so... I really think you need to let go of old patterns of thinking. Like, you're not powerless and you're not a martyr. You are, you're a grown-ass adult <laughs> who embodies queen energy. And you might not even notice how queenly you're being, but... Oh, is there a selenite crooked? Yes, it is. Okay, that's good enough. Um, hold on, I'm sorry, these things sort of bother me. All right, that will have to be good enough. So you clicked on this video in order to help yourself with self-love. I think something that you might not notice is the power you have over others. And so I would say you might need to watch your mouth uh, sometimes when it comes to expressing your truth. Um, you might find yourself to be a little bit judgmental. Um, there the shadow side of the queen might be something that you're more comfortable embodying. And underneath the soul, we have the page of cups. So even if you have this hard exterior of being someone who is more powerful and dominant in the room, you have the squishy inner center that uh, is very new to emotional uh, stability, is very new to romance and things of that nature. I think there's a lot of tumultuous energy going on here. Like you have, like this is like your like surface level, and then like underneath there's this like huge energy of of turmoil, tumult, tumultuousness. Um, I'm going to continue pulling. Can we get some advice, some clarifying advice for pile number two. I'm sorry if these are sort of tough messages. Two of Pentacles. The Fool. We have so many major arcana coming out. You might actually be at a sort of pivotal moment in your life um, where you are making a great change. This might be a new relationship. This might be a career change. This might be you uh, going to therapy or seeking help from a professional. And that will completely turn your worldview up, uh, up on its head, I bet. Um, we have a little fox here as well as some white birds. Probably some doves or pigeons, mayhap. Mayhaps. We have the Wheel of Fortune. Okay. We're getting a lot of major arcana, which means greater secrets, and it is the more eventful times in our lives or the more important people that we meet. So, yeah, I think you might be in the middle of this tower moment um, of relationship might have just ended, and the relationship or, or situation might have ended because of or in relation to the shadow of a queen archetype, someone who is more malevolent um not malevolent that's not the right word i want to say um but someone who maybe is more domineering and controlling and you might be finding that that is no longer a way that you can live your life and you have to start over here with number zero the fool 
and it might be like a slice of humble pie of of recognizing like wait even though i thought i was this queen and this and i embody this empress energy and am very kind and nurturing and giving there are those shadow parts of myself when maybe i expect people to give back in the same way and you have to realize that what you give like there might not be reciprocity or reciprocation um, when it comes to what you're giving. So this fool is about to take a leap of faith um, off this this little pedestal and the universe is going to catch them. Um, we also have the Wheel of Fortune upright which is a time of good luck, a time of things going your way. Um, it might not feel like it, like I said, I don't think you're in a period of bad luck. I feel like you're in a period of change and transition. We had that crowning card come out. Um, it might be a very difficult transition into a more humble position. Like, you might, your ego might be very loud right now, um, I will admit, but um, the soft inner parts of yourself are lovable, are worthy of love. Um, let's see. The High Priestess, another major arcana. So, uh, and we have Ace of Swords uh, as the message from your higher self. So yes, a new beginning, a new way of thinking about things, a new way of expressing yourself. I think if you... Some, if you're someone who self-deprecates a lot with humor, I think that is going to have to come to an end very soon or else you're not going to be able to start this new part of your life. Um, I just think you're so powerful and I, I think you, I think half of you know that you're powerful and you know that you exhibit queenly attributes. Um, and then another half of you aren't aware at all and the queendom is like in your shadow and you, you don't see it. Okay. I'm going to clear these tarot cards. In a very messy, messy way. Thank you for listening to these sort of tough love messages. I never know what the readings are going to be until we get into them. So we're going to use the Work Your Light Oracle. I also got a feeling, and not to be like uppity, but I got a feeling that like if you are a tarot reader, you might have been looking at my cards and like judging the way I was reading them or reading them in a way that you might not have. And if you are, if you do, if you are a tarot reader and you were like, I see this message, I see that message and I wasn't getting that across, go ahead and sound off in the comments and tell me what you saw. Like I said, it was a very difficult energy to sort of parse. All right, let's see. What advice uh, does Pile 2 need right now? Spirit for their best interests. Yeah. Advice. Giving you a little bit of ASMR whispers, not a lot. Let's see. I want this one. The crumbling. <laughs> what are you clinging clinging on to? So this is like this Oracle text Oracle Dex version of the crumbling. Or excuse me, this Oracle Dex version of the tower, um, as you can see. But um in through the door is a field of flowers and sunshine. So <sighs> pile two. I just wanna I wanna level with you and just say like you're doing a good job. Everybody has flaws, right? Honestly, I think you might need to put down your crown and your scepter and accept the fact that you don't know what's going on. Honestly, I think there's a lot of external forces that are fucking with you. Um, honestly, maybe doing an energy cleanse um, because there it's such a heavy energy. I wonder if you have attachments, especially if you do spiritual work. Um, or witchcraft, um, it might be time for a cleanse, it might be time for uh, um, a smoke cleanse or a steam cleanse um, using crystals like selenite or clear quartz, something like that, uh, just to get yourself out of your own head because the you that I see underneath all this armor is very soft and cuddly and sweet and loves 
loves sweet things maybe you're a desserts person um or something like that um and is very in touch with their inner child and has this element of playfulness about them but there's all this armor um like crustacean like armor around you and that's probably to keep yourself from being hurt and everybody needs like a person suit that you put on to interact with the world you know what i mean you can't always be soft and squishy but you do need to be soft and squishy sometimes um even as tower moments happen excuse me i need some water See what else we got we have no wait to postpone no let me shuffle some more all right never mind <laughs> it wanted to come out you all saw that wait to postpone pause say no yes especially as tumultuous things happen in your life now is not the time to be making decisions um in terms of we have lightning storms in both of these maybe you're a thunderstorm witch If you're plowing through a situation head first, I think it might be time to pause and look around and see if you're hurting yourself or other people around you. And that's okay if you're making mistakes, just being a little bit more self-aware of the power you have over other people. You might not even realize how cutting your words can be. Sisterhood of the Rose, beauty and devotion, priestess, mystic, teacher. Yes, yes, you are very much a spiritual person. I just want to get at, I want to get at the soft part of you and like shake it. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? I just, I, I'm, I'm tired of trying to get through to you through your outer shell. Like, hi, do you want to say hi to me? Okay. All right. So this is going to be a very specific message for some of you, but with this no, if you are thinking about texting an ex, or something like that, something that might be a little bit self-destructive. If there's any self-destructive tendencies, this is what this no is talking about. So I'm going to clear these. Yeah, like don't text your ex. I don't know why that was like the main message coming through. But thank you so much for letting me read for you. Ooh, we got Zarud V, this monkey man with grass energy some earth sign energy damn this dude looks crazy look at his eyes but if this reading i know there was a lot of tough love but if this reading resonated with you please leave a like comment or subscribe down below it was challenging i don't know if you've been told that before that you are a challenging energy to read Hopefully my messages came through. Let's pick this one. Ooh, Zarina, another queen, another earth energy. This is reverse hollow. And let's pick one more. Saw's bug. This is not hollow, but he is one of my favorite Pokemon, especially in his winter form. And this is another grass type, so lots of earth energy, getting outside, grounding, touching grass. I kind of hate having to leave you here, pile two. I feel like I wasn't doing your energy justice, if I can be real. There's a lot of self-judgment going on right now, and I think I'm gonna, as I always do, veer off the path that has been set out before me um, by myself, mind you. Um, but even if I make the path, <laughs> I can't fucking stay on it. So I'm gonna, let's get real, let's get real. All right, what is lovable? We're trying to do a self-love and we just came out with all the flaws about pile two. Like, I don't know, like, there's so much self-judgment and so much like perfectionism that I don't care about all of that. I don't care about pile two being perfect. I care about talking about what is lovable about them. So we're going to do this one more time. And I am going to keep the first reading in because sometimes you need to do that. Um, and just, we're talking about the crowning. We're talking about rebirth, reunion. 
what is lovable about pile and I'm not gonna say a single negative thing let's just like everything's gonna be positive all right um, thank you if you've made it to this part of the reading for bearing with me and I'm kind of excited all right let's see what is lovable about pi oh did we get four all right five of cups you're very fluid with your motions. You might move like you've studied ballet. You might actually be a dancer. Um, you move, you flow like water. Um, even if you're like not a dancer, like putting on music and dancing in your living room counts as being a dancer. Um, and let's see, we got some goldfish here and some, some water fairies. So the way you move your body is beautiful and very, very lovable. And obviously all all parts of us body heart mind and soul are already lovable i'm just trying to look at the specifics here two fives five of wands for what's lovable about your heart <sighs> you are loyal and you stick up for people um even when it's hard what's lovable about your mind five of swords are you kidding me three fives in a row that seems like a poker hand <laughs> three of a kind um and then the last one is your soul is strength. Okay. Yes, you're being very strong by watching this reading. All right. We got the wheel again and the page of cups again. The six of swords and the page of wands. And then higher self, we have three of cups. So this is the transition period. We saw the tower, we saw the wheel, we saw the fool, and now you're sort of in free fall with like, okay, I'm, you're like in the midst of getting ready to let go of that ego, of that hard outer shell, and I want to support you while you're in this sort of tumultuous period of time, and I want to say that... Uh, Yes, you have imperfections. Yes, you may have hurt people in the past, but everybody makes mistakes. Everybody hurts people by accident. It's just part of being social creatures, right? You can't do everything perfectly. There's no point in doing things perfectly because perfect doesn't exist. And perfect is a goalpost that keeps being pushed farther and farther away because it's it's unreachable, right? Um, if you're someone who struggles with perfectionism, I want to like reach out a hand and be like, hey, me too. It is really hard, um, but I'm here for you and I support you. And I, I like am trying so hard to say such positive things because I feel like it might be really hard for you right now. And that's okay. We have the Six of Swords, a period of rest and respite and sort of hiding, not hiding from the world, but taking a break from the harsh realities of the world. Um, and the page of wands here, we've got this lovely musical instrument. Um, expressing yourself through art might be kind of important right now, um, especially if you're in sort of a chaotic state. Okay. And now I'm going to try this again. And we're going to do the Work Your Light Oracle cards one more time. Hopefully what I'm saying is getting through. Hopefully some of this resonates with you. If it does, please let me know down in the comments. Leave a like or a subscribe. Even if you're doing something, like maybe you're an artist or you're trying to support yourself with your art or, or an independent business, you might be worried that nobody will like it, but people will like it. If you're speaking from a place of authenticity, it's going to resonate with people. Like um, fan fiction, for example. You're already doing it. <laughs> Stop overthinking. Keep facing your true north. Yes, yes, yes. I was going to say... Um, for fan fiction, you can write something that is like so specific and so self-indulgent that you might think that nobody will like it, and then that's the fic that like really resonates with people. Or you write something that you get four likes on, um, but those four people really, really liked it. So be yourself. Okay, you might have had to fit yourself into a box. You might have had to try to change parts of yourself in order to be truly loved and 
oh okay no you don't have to be an empress you don't have to be a queen you can be the fool about to like fall <laughs> to his death no i'm sorry uh about to fall but the universe will catch you like you don't have to have it all together you can be crazy and wild and and free and and be doing things that make sense to you obviously don't like hurt yourself or other people maliciously but like be doing things that that make you feel free um okay I can see your inner child coming out now like let's take some breaths together and exhale <laughs> okay now I see your energy you are a beautiful soul you are, have a beautiful inner child someone who is so curious about the world and you are already doing it thank you so much for sticking with me through this reading I'm so happy to see you I'm so happy to have you here um, my, I feel it in my heart just how lovable you are just how happy you can be um, it's uh, beginning to be summer where I live and so hopefully you get to is it summer for you too or nice weather you can spend lots of time outside playing in the sun playing dress-up games playing with toys really connecting to your inner child is how you are going to move forward when shit hits the fan when you are still connected to that like weak inner so you can be weak you don't have to be strong you can cry you can be fragile you can let things affect you um that's okay you don't have to keep up this queenly state of being um, even like, even though you are and you have that part of yourself, you don't have to be. And I think it might really behoove you to sort of put your armor down, put your sword and shield down and just like play in the sun. We have Anna, grandmother of Jesus. Yes. Okay. You are supported by your spirit guides, seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan and trust your path if you knew you'd be supported what would you do that is such a good question like if you knew that whatever it was you wanted to do people would support like what would you do like what would you truly actually want to accomplish what would you actually want to do and I I don't know the answer to that only you do and I would love to hear about it in the comments like what is it that you truly want to do and it can be anything. The thing that makes you feel free, the thing that makes you feel in touch with your inner child and your higher self is what you want to do, right? So, um, I'm making, I'm like being so extra right now. I wanted to pull some tarot cards because they help me be a little bit more specific. Um, can we get some, can we get some? Okay, hold on. I want to channel your inner child a little bit here. Like I said, even if I plan the reading, it's, it's going to go however the fuck it's going to go. And I don't have someone here in front of me to tell me when to stop, so I'm just going to keep going. Awesome. All right, from your inner child, we have the Nine of Pentacles. Yes, you're already doing it. You already have so much abundance within yourself. The High Priestess, you knew this already. You knew this going in. We have a pomegranate here and an owl, by the way, as well as some gold leaves. Um, there's no set path when it comes to witchcraft or spirituality. It's about what feels right for you. And touching into, getting in touch with your inner child is going to help with your cleansing rituals is going to help with your spellcraft because you won't be worried about doing it imperfectly. You're just going to be doing what feels fun and what is good for you. The Nine of Swords. Okay. The Nine of Swords is about insomnia. It's about the things that keep you up at night. It is about anxiety and worry. So you don't have to suffer, period. Like you can get support and professional help if anxiety is something that you struggle a lot with. So. That is where I'm going to leave the tarot cards. Let me pull some Pokemon cards for you again. I mean, you can never have too many Pokemon. Am I right? Or am I right? Okay. Let's see. Let's do this one. Let's do these three here in the middle. Okay. We have Porygon. With reverse hollow. We have Simis here. Let's pull them out so we can see the 
little fire monkey. And we have Haunch Crow V, dark type. We love that. So these are your guys. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. All right, these are your guys to take home. And imagine that Pokemon is real and you can be friends with them. Okay, I have done so much during this reading. Hopefully it resonates. Please let me know down below if it did. Um, like and subscribe. Bye. Hi there, Pile 3. If you chose this amethyst, then this reading is for you out of the way okay so I just filmed pile number two I would say check it out because it was very very interesting um I read like two to three versions of their tarot cards um because I felt like I wasn't getting to the truth of the matter and uh it, it's a very interesting read um and I hope you guys like it but pile three let's get into your oracles we have awareness with gardenia healing is happening you're not broken trust the process it's safe to soften and number 16 bitch fire stand up for yourself we have some sunlight coming through hopefully you don't mind so this is someone who's very spiritually aware and you might honestly be aware of the healing that you are already doing um let me look up what awareness is. I've been in, um, I've been doing book readings for these. Let's see. Awareness. Know that you are loved and that you may actually have a secret love. Divine messages, an opening of awareness, and an indication that a higher, oh, we're doing tarot. I love that. A uh, higher entity or power, totem or guide is watching over you. Restoration of order, balance, and the chance for peace is indicated and should be expected very soon. It is, or it should be expected soon. It is time to review and possibly renew trust, and the decision made may prove to be correct. We have um, trust the process as well as uh, renew trust here. Don't give up too soon and ensure your, you prioritize your energy goals, time, and commitments. You may find you are feeling unloved or unwanted, are stuck on trivial details, or even lose touch with reality. Be careful as this is not the bigger picture. And the place is Perfume Pagoda, Pagoda, Vietnam. So, yes, this is someone who is very spiritually aware, and you might... You might know how to get down when it comes to witchcraft. You know how to set your protections. You know how to cleanse bullshit out, um, which I really want to congratulate you for and is a very lovable aspect. You probably have some sort of exorcist archetype. Uh, I was talking about archetypes a lot in pile one, I believe. Um, they're very interesting to me and might be interesting to you as well. Um, there's lots of research about them from different philosophers, but Bitchfire is about how some people may be bad mouthing you, but you need to stand up for yourself or like you're already doing it. And she's got um blood on her nails. Um I don't think right now is the time where you need to completely stand up for yourself. I know this card came out, but um I think it's more like you are ready in case it happens. Um yeah, I'm gonna clear these. Okay. We are going to dive into your tarot and see what is lovable about you pile three thank you so much for being here and letting me read for you one more for good luck this is some sloppy overhand shuffling all right, we have the Ace of Wands. Okay, when it's coming out, uh, what is lovable about your body specifically? Ace of Wands, uh, Hitachi, anybody? Um, <laughs> we have some foxes here. So you are foxy, you are a vixen, you know what you like and what you don't, and don't be afraid to say it. Um, communication is, is everything. 
three of wands for what is lovable about your heart you have such an open fierceness to your heart like i feel it in my chest of like you really love what you love and who you love and you are ready to like stand up for them and to fight for them and i think it really angers you when people do your friends wrong and you want to like swing a club at the problem like i think very like we have two fire cards here so that's leo sagittarius and aries um and i just wanna i i love it i love this fire energy you're a go-getter and you are very defensive offensive when it comes to your friends like that picture of daisy and luigi where she's saying he said no pickles um i think is your energy when it comes to the people in your circle what is lovable about your mind is the moon your mind unparalleled i love this energy pile three i am going to be real with you sorry that the lighting is so you know what? actually it looks like very beautiful actually so i am not, i'm not sorry um i said no pickles <laughs> um but it's lovable about your mind is your imagination and your ability to see things that are not yet created you might be a very creative person, a very intuitive person. Um, you might be fooled by illusion sometimes, like you might be fooled by surface level shit sometimes, but uh, who hasn't been fooled like that already? Um, if you are someone who is spiritual, um, I would say maybe do a quick cleanse of your space um, to make sure you don't have any attachments or any nasties hiding in corners. For your soul, we have death, number 13. So you are someone who is very protective someone who's very loving and you help people through times of difficult transitions you're sort of like a midwife i want to say um birth and rebirth are indicated here for clarifier we have the nine of wands some more fire the knight of pentacles Yes, very generous, very patient. You give a lot of yourself and your time to the people that you find are worth it. The Queen of Wands, Queen of Fire. The book describes her as poetry in motion, and she is playing this lovely harp with um, some foxes, uh, some white birds, and a little quail, it looks like. A cute little bird. And the Ace of Swords. We have two aces here. And then your higher self, we have the Fool. So you are at a new beginning pile three you are at something very beautiful you are in alignment with your highest self and whatever road that you are going down or are thinking of going down um i think you will be supported the king of cups three of pentacles the five of pentacles i just wanted to and the queen of cups okay i just wanted to pull some extra advice slash clarifiers for moi there's a lot of balance here you might be good at balancing postures in yoga i don't know I just had to pause and take a couple deep breaths because I got a little bit anxious, a little bit jittery energy coming from here. And I want to say that um, if watching like a self-love tarot reading is giving you anxiety, maybe now is not the best time to be watching videos like this. It might be time to go inward with this hermit card, number nine. Um, and just spend some quality time with yourself with number one um and remember that you are beautiful and you are worthy of love no matter what what you've done or who you are you are lovable as you are in this moment not who you're going to become not for what you can do and not who you were in the past you are lovable as you are right now and that is always going to be true and that is a place of support that you can work from and knowing that like if you make a mistake or if you hurt somebody by accident, you're going to lose your lovability, and that's simply not true. So, I'm going to move on to the oracle cards. I sent that message, uh, I think in pile one as well, like if this is giving you anxiety, maybe, maybe click away. But I do have a vested interest in you watching this, so stay! Ha ha ha! No, don't leave. You're so sexy. Haha. -ha. 
All right, so let's get some advice and encouragement for pile number three. I want this one. Take a break, take a break. A life's work, not a season. Get off the treadmill. <laughs> um, yes, like you're already doing it. You're already doing exactly what you need to be doing. Star seed, what lights you up? Look at how beautiful that is. Um, if you vibe with star seed energy, take that as confirmation. Um, star seed, I'm not quite sure exactly how to describe it or what it really is, but it's this feeling of being placed here on earth um, with a like an extraterrestrial soul in order to do good is how I understand it. Um, and then there's like different places in space, like the Pleiades that people are from. Um, I don't know, if you vibe with starseed stuff, let me know in the comments. Nearer, who or what is triggering you? So yeah, it, it might be kind of hard to look at yourself in the mirror and say I love you, but um, that is exactly what you should be doing. And share your voice. Be loud with how you love yourself. It's okay to post thirst traps. Come out of the cave persecution expression. So after you've taken your time in that hermit energy that we saw in the back of the deck earlier, um, it's okay to come out of the cave and share what you have learned about yourself um, and share your expressions of self, like art or something like that, if that um, interests you. Okay, we're moving right along. And we are going to pull some Pokemon cards for you to take a little friend home with you today. Let's see, what Pokemon do we need? Let's take this guy. Roseanne's backup. I don't know who she is, but she's a full hollow, a full art hollow trainer card. Samurott, and I have multiple cards behind him. I have three Samurots in here, so you got three of these guys coming home with you. Hope you like water types. And we have Zarina came out for pile number two. Um, she is a reverse hollow, but very big royal energy. And I think one of the moves that she learns is like high jump kick or something like that. Because um, of her, her long ass legs, kicky powers. Okay, I'm getting silly. So I think it is time for me to log off and say thank you so much for watching. If this resonated with you, please let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like or subscribe.